So in the previous lesson, we looked at how to find the product of two vectors. We looked at the scalar or the dot product as well as the vector or the cross product. Now in this lesson, we want to look at how to find the product of three vectors. And specifically, we are going to do the scalar triple product. Now let A, B, and C be three vectors. Let A, B, and C be three vectors. Now the scalar triple product of these three vectors, which is giving us A, B, C in a rectangular bracket is giving us the dot product of one of the vectors with the cross product of the two remaining vectors. Now the scalar triple product is obtained from the fact that this expression gives a scalar quantity. Now, how do we find the scalar triple product of these three vectors? So let's assume that each of these three vectors is represented as a Cartesian vector. So we have vector A to be A1 I cap plus A2 J cap plus A3 K cap. We have vector B also equal to b1 i cap plus b2 j cap plus b3 k cap and then we have vector c also equal to c1 i cap plus c2 j cap plus c3 k cap now the scalar triple product of these three vectors can be given as the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix in which each row is occupied by the coefficients of the unit vectors along the x, y, and z axis for each of the vectors given. So we are going to draw or we are going to have the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix and then we have for row 1 that is going to be occupied by the coefficients of the unit vectors along the x, y, z axis. So we have A1, A2, A3, and then for row 2, we have B1, B2, B3. For row 3, we have C1, C2, and then C3. Now, before we take some examples, let's try to understand the geometrical interpretation to the scalar triple product. So assuming that we have three vectors A, B, and C, and then all these vectors are three-dimensional vectors, and we have the three-dimensional plane so that this is the x-axis we have this to be the y-axis and then this to be the z-axis now we are going to define two vectors vector b and vector c directed along the x and the y-axis respectively so we have this to be vector b and then we have this to be vector c now let's draw let's draw lines which are parallel to both vector b and vector c and this forms the area of a parallelogram now the area of this parallelogram the area of this parallelogram can be obtained by obtaining the magnitude of the cross product of the two vectors so this is how to find the area of the parallelogram as far as this diagram is concerned now let's introduce another vector that is vector a and let's try to draw lines which are parallel to vector a and the whole focus is to complete the shape now after completing the shape we have this figure to be a parallelopiped, a parallelopiped. So this is the figure we have. Now, our interest is to find the volume of this parallelopiped. So we know that the volume, the volume of any rectangular figure is obtained by the length times the width times the height. And then the length times the width has already been defined as the area the area of 
the base of the parallelepiped the area of the base of the parallelepiped that is this this part and then we have h to be the height of the parallelepiped h is the height of the parallelepiped now since the area of the base of the parallelepiped is defined as b cross c and then we have the height to be beta a then we say that the volume of the parallel piped is giving us the dot product of a with the cross product of b and then c now this expression can either give a positive value or a negative value and so for that matter since volume is a non-negative value we are interested in the absolute value of the scalar triple product of these three vectors so to find the volume of a parallelepiped that is given by the absolute value of a dot into brackets b cross c so this is how to find the volume of a parallelepiped so sometimes you'll be asked to find the volume of a tetrahedron so that is given by one sixth of the volume of a parallelepiped and that is equal to one over six times the absolute value of a dot into brackets b cross c so this is a formula to find the volume of a tetrahedron as well as this to be the volume of the parallelepiped now let's take an example so in this example we are asked to find the volume of the parallelepiped and the tetrahedron determined by the vectors a b and c so we have each of the vectors expressed as cartesian vectors so we can simply write these vectors as for vector a we have the coefficients of the unit vectors we have one two three vector b we have negative one one two for vector c we have two one four two one four so first of all let's try to find the volume of the parallel pipette so that is given by the absolute value of a dot into bracket b cross c and that is equal to the determinant of a three by three matrix so that we have each row that is row one being occupied by the coefficients of the unit vectors along the x y z axis same for row two and then same for row three for vector b and then c respectively so we have we have for row one that is being occupied by one two three for row two negative one one two row three two one four so now let's try to find the determinants of this three by three matrix so we select this value that is the first element of row one so one and then into brackets as we select this value we cancel out the row and column containing this value and then we can multiply four by one and that is four minus one times two that is two and then minus we take this value we cancel out row and column containing this value so we have negative two or minus two into brackets we cancel our row and column we have four times negative one which is negative four minus two times two which is four and then plus three we cancel out row and then column we have one times negative one negative one we have two times one which is two so minus two so notice that always it is plus minus plus now let's proceed so this is equal to we have one times four minus two is two four minus two is two minus two into brackets we have negative four minus four that is negative eight plus three into brackets negative one minus two is negative three let's simplify further so one times two is two negative two times negative eight is 16 and then we have three times negative three that is negative nine 
so when you add 2 to 16 you have 18 and then 18 minus 9 is 9 notice that we have this to be the absolute value of whatever it has in the middle so absolute value of 9 and that is equal to 9 cubic units 9 cubic units because volume is measured or measured in cubic units so 9 cubic units that is the volume of the parallel pipette now to find the volume of the tetrahedron that is equal to one sixth of the volume of the parallel pipette and we have this to be equal to 1 over 6 times the absolute value of 9 and that is equal to 1 over 6 times 9 3 goes here 2 times 3 goes here 3 times so that becomes 3 over 2 cubic units so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye